for the first project, I found these 24 inch stacking pumpkins at Dollar Tree. Now it was in the dollar plus section. As you can see, it was $5. When you stack them, they're pretty tall. So I was pretty excited when I saw these and had to pick them up. I wasn't 100% positive what I wanted to do with them. Um, I feel like there's a lot of ways you could go with this. So I went a little simple for this first time around, gave all three pieces a flat white spray paint. It didn't stick all that great, but really it was just the base coat. Now I'm only going to kind of show you how I treated one of these pumpkins because I did all three of them the exact same way. No one wants to watch me put a paint or a, a layer of paint on all three pumpkins. I did moss. I did uh, celery. No, I did not. I did moss. <laughs> I did ocean blue and I did um, cashew all by Waverly. Now, once all three of these were dry, I then just took some plaster and I did a dry brush technique, which is basically I take this kind of matted chippy brush that I get from Dollar Tree and I put a very little amount of paint on there and then I'm just gonna drag my paintbrush from top to bottom. And you kind of can build on the effect that you're looking for. If you go too heavy, it's not the end of the world. You just go back through with the original, like on this one, it's moss. So if I went too heavy in some spots, I would just go back over in that moss color and kind of go over the white portion. So I do this, like I said, to all three of these. So this top pumpkin is moss. The middle pumpkin I did in celery and the largest bottom pumpkin I did in an ocean blue by Waverly also. And again, I just didn't think everyone would wanna watch me paint and treat each and every one of these. So once I was done getting the kind of top treatment on there, I painted this stem in one full coat of fawn. And then while the fawn was still wet, I went through with a small paintbrush and I just added some like paint stroke details using Waverly's antiquing wax. And that just kind of added a little bit of dimension to it. It's not a technique that's very difficult. It's one of those things where it really adds a lot of personality to the piece, but it does not take any kind of technical know-how on how to do it. It's very relaxing and very straightforward. So once I get the stem completely covered, then like I said, while the paint is still wet, I'm gonna go through with the antiquing wax. I had no idea I left this much of this in here. I apologize. <laughs> that was horrible having to watch every single paint stroke. What was I thinking? I am sorry. Here we are. We're finally to the point where I start to add some of the antiquing wax to give it a little bit more dimension. <laughs> Using the exact same paintbrush again, not waiting for it to dry. Just kind of go in kind of sloppy, place a couple sloppy streaks and then I just go through. And you wanna make sure that when you're doing this, you're doing one solid motion. You don't wanna go up and down side to side and kind of paint all funky. You really want that the striations to be in the same direction. And that's what kind of gives you a little bit more of a realistic effect. That's that. So all I did is I did add a small little tassel, nothing too fancy. They're sitting next to my fireplace. So on this next one, again, I'm really trying to use up a lot of the stock and materials that I have on hand. And I had this tic-tac-toe board. It was, oh goodness, I can't even remember. Um, I did get it from Dollar Tree. It's the larger of them. So it was either $3 or $5. I took the pieces out and I can't remember what the pieces were using my favorite technique with antiquing wax and a baby wipe. That's how I apply it to the square portion of the wood. Now you can see my leaf. It's a little seen better days, but I didn't want to just trash it and completely waste it. So I decided to kind of play around with a couple of the words. I had the leather words that I used in the previous video, but I decided to go ahead and settle on some wood words using the exact same technique with the antiquing wax. I'm going to apply it with just a thin layer and I'm going to use that with a baby wipe. I really like this technique. I feel like you can control the level of stain that you get. So it's either gonna be really dark or you can make it really light. 
Now I did want to put some kind of staining coat on the leaf itself. So I'm using a combination of the antiquing wax. I used a very small amount of that. And then I used um, a larger amount of the pickling. Uh, it was like a whitewash pickling wood stain. Now this is a bare and it is a water-based fast drying. So I just kind of mixed those two and made my own color. And I liked it because it wasn't so light that it stood out, but then it wasn't so dark that it blended into the background. So this color came out really nice. Now, my original thought process was to just do kind of stripes, but as I got even just the first two stripes on, I just wasn't loving it. And so I decided I was just gonna go ahead and stain the whole thing, that way it was all matching. So again, putting some on with my paintbrush, smearing it around, and then wiping the excess away with a wet baby wipe. And as soon as I put the wood words on here, I knew immediately it was just, it was blending in too much. So just taking some white paint and a small paintbrush, I went over and I painted over the words, so that way it would just stand out a little bit more. This was incredibly easy. I think it's really cute. It's very simplistic, but I love the color of the wood and the variation, and I think it's a nice addition to my home. Next, I've got these really cute little dishes that I got from the thrift store, and I just thought they would be really cute little additions to the tablescape. I got each of these for $1.23, so it's still less than Dollar Tree. Um, I will link my heat gun down in the description box below. This thing's a lifesaver when it comes to removing sticky tags, especially ones from the thrift store. I just, they always put them in like the most obnoxious places. And so it really helps just to take this off. Now it makes it that much quicker. Once I get this completely removed, I then off camera, take it, get it nice and clean, wipe it down, dry it. Once it's completely dry and ready to use, then I'm going to take these rub on transfers that I got last year from Dollar Tree, but I couldn't find them when it was in season. I found these after the season. So picked them up and saved them for this year. Now I'm just gonna kind of find a couple designs that I like. What I like about using these is when you're placing them on any kind of glass or porcelain, once you place them down, they stick pretty well. Um, I don't know if it was because I left a little bit of like moisture residue behind, but I did wanna just double check and make sure that I really rubbed these transfers to make sure that they transferred well. Um, but if you're removing the plastic film and you notice that there's any left behind, just place the plastic film right back down, go over and give it a really good rub and it will transfer over really well. Now these are, I did not put any kind of like dishwashing or Mod Podge over it only because I wasn't sure if I was going to potentially want to use these dishes again down the road. So again, I just kind of have them sitting on the tablescape and they're just kind of there for visual effect, but I wouldn't say that I would use them with food or place them in the dishwasher. I feel like these would make really cute um, like neighbor gifts if you put like packets of tea or something in them. All right, for the next project. Again, the name of the game is using what we have on hand. Now, last year I made a pumpkin using this exact same one you'll see here in the corner. And I wanted to do something just a little bit different. I actually still really like last year's. I have it in my, my decor, so I didn't want to use the same wording. So using that same mixture of the pickling stain and the antiquing wax, I had some left over. So I decided just to put a light coat on just the exterior of this, just to kind of make those two wood tones pop a little bit. Now, you could, let this dry, go back over and do another coat or two coats, however dark or light you wanted this. That's what's so fun is you can really customize it. Or if you wanted the inside to be stained and then have the outside be light. I mean, the possibilities are really just there for your interpretation on what you think would go good with your decor. I got this cute little macrame set from Dollar Tree. Now, I'll be honest, I love the look of macrame, but I don't have the time or the patience for it, quite honestly. <laughs> I wish I did. Um, my friend Julia over at The Mug Life, she's done some really cute macrame things. I just, this is about as macrame as you're going to see me get. All I did was attach the first main string, and I'm just using some scotch tape just to kind of help keep it in place for now until I'm completely done. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to loop it around. Now, I'll do this in real time so you can see how I'm doing it because I think explaining it, I'm probably going to make it more confusing. 
it's called, I believe it's called a lark's head knot and it's very simple. It also makes it nice because you can remove these if, you know, you put it all together, say you like it for this year, come next year, you don't necessarily like the boho vibe and you just want to take these off. It would be really easy to remove these and then do something completely different with your pumpkin to kind of repurpose this. So I did this after cutting just the string. I didn't use the beads. I didn't use anything else. I just wanted a simple, very neutral fringe pumpkin. You might remember this pillow in some of the pictures from last week's video. Um, so the colored plaid here, now I got this from the Target dollar spot last year and I had it in my kitchen, but I really liked it. And then I found a really pretty Costco pillow that kind of matched it. So I decided I would turn it into a smaller pillow. That way I have one in my basket and one on my couch and they kind of coordinate. So using one of the Dollar Tree canvas tote bags, I just cut the back portion off of it. And I'm going to use that as the back portion of the cloth. Now I'm just using regular hot glue and I'm going to glue like three and a half out of four edges. You wanna keep a portion open so you can flip it, turn it inside out. And then in order to kind of customize this, I'm just going to add a little bit of the leftover macrame cord that we had from the previous project. So I don't wanna have a ton of leftovers of random string and things of that nature. So I'm trying to use up pretty much as much as I have. So using this pumpkin form, I'm just gonna trace it out with a really thin, mark on here you can see you can kind of see the marks but you cover it with the hot glue so as you're going through you're just going to use the string and you're just going to kind of trace over that now what i liked about doing this was i really like the more modern kind of like single line art and so i decided to just do this in one piece instead of cutting it up and um so there'll be some overlapping in some spaces but in the end i really liked the way this turned out i thought it was really cute i just kind of zigzagged the string through the stem portion and then using some of Dollar Tree's new faux leather leaves I decided to grab kind of the smaller of the maple leaves trimmed it down so that it would fit nice I don't do good with bows I kind of <laughs> debated if I was going to put a bow in or not once I trimmed it I just put a little bit of hot glue on there and I was able to attach it really well now with that little open piece I just took an old pillow I'm removing the stuffing from that. I am placing it into here. I'm going to just fold down those open raw edge seam and I'm going to hot glue it all back together. You can machine wash this, although I would wash it on cold and I would air dry it. I definitely wouldn't put it in the dryer. If you put too much heat on it, that will cause the hot glue to unravel. Like I said, I love the way this looks in my little basket and I have one that is slightly coordinating on the couch. So it kind of just brings both ends of the living room together. I'm in love with the blue, the burnt orange, the creams. I know that blue may not be considered a neutral color, but I love the way they all coordinate together. Now, again, going off of what I have on hand, I found this uh, plant pot, I guess. <laughs> And I had painted it last year and never got to it. So as I was unpacking my stuff, I came across it and realized, oh, I really need to put some use to this. Now I'm using, this is the strap that came from the bag that we used in the previous project. So I'm just gonna take this strap. It fit perfectly on the bottom portion of this vase. And so that allowed me to kind of add a little bit of a two-tone effect. And I'm just going to be really straightforward and simple with it. I'm not going to use any fancy glue. I'm just gonna hot glue it down and then stretch it nice and tight so that it's got a really firm hold. And then I'm going to take a really cute little window clean from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna slather it in some Mod Podge. Now you can get Mod Podge at Dollar Tree, which is a nice deal. So you can see the little smaller one here. That's where I got that one. Um, I chose to do the matte finish one because that's what I had. And the paint that I used to cover the vase, it was a little bit more of a matte finish. So I thought it would look weird if I had done a bunch of um, like a glossy finish or anything like that. Now you just want to kind of make sure I was way more heavy handed. And so I had a lot more left over and I could see the bubbles on this more than I really wish that I had. I almost completely left this project out of the video because I don't know if I'm absolutely in love with it, but I do like it from a distance. It looks really cute. 
on my mantle. I think it's a nice, good blue, and it just kind of, again, kind of coordinates well with the rest of the decor that I've been putting together. So I found another pumpkin form and wasn't exactly sure what I wanted to do with it. So I had just used the um, window clings. And so I kind of thought I was going to do that again. So I'm just going through this really quickly because the start process is really not much what the end process ended up being. Um, I am going to use my antiquing wax with a baby wipe and I'm going to go ahead and just put that stained effect on here again. I absolutely love using a baby wipe for this because I do feel that you get more control as far as, you know, how much you're going to put on and how much you want to remove. And that way you can make this a little, a little bit more dark, a little bit more light. So once I get that completely on there, then it was just a matter of just kind of playing around with it, trying to figure out what I had on hand, what was kind of sitting around me, still had a little bit more of that macrame cord. So I decided to wrap that around the stem just to kind of give that a little bit of a softer, more neutral color to that. Um, I didn't want to have just like one piece of string lying around. <laughs> so I know it's nothing groundbreaking for someone to wrap the stem of a wood pumpkin. I just wanted to add a little bit of detail while getting rid of extra supplies. I love the Lindley um, glue gun. I just, I'm obsessed with it. So here, like I said, I'm just kind of playing around and I'm just kind of figuring out what I want. How do I want this? And nothing really stuck. And then as I was leaving my craft room, I came across this belt that I had gotten from the thrift store. It says that I paid $2.99, but I can almost guarantee I got it at least 50% off because I feel like $3 on a belt that I was going to rip apart is more than I would have typically paid. So I can't confirm or deny exactly how much I paid for it. Now I just cut it down and then I'm going to use some hot glue. Now my friend Megan over at Painted and Distressed, she had sent me some really cute items from the 99 cent only store. She lives in California and here in Colorado we don't have those. And so she had found some really cute items that were a dollar and maybe even I think a couple of them were like two dollars. So this is something that I had left over from last year and I decided to just repurpose this and kind of give it a little bit of love. Now I love the colors again. It's got that bluish teal to it, that kind of more burnt orange and adding that really fun natural braided leather from the belt. I think that's what really elevated it in my eyes. Now a while ago I had picked up some of these solo wood flowers. Now these were at the Dollar Tree. And so I decided to finally put these together. Now I am the first to admit I am not the best when it comes to adding embellishments like flowers and bows and stuff. So it's a little janky, but I really like the way it turned out in the end. It's very kind of understated. That's it for today. Please leave me a comment. Let me know which one was your favorite. I cannot thank you enough for clicking on my video. You guys, the support means more to me than you can ever imagine. Until next time. Bye.